Beloved saints of God, how wonderful it is to greet you in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to thank you for your ongoing support of the union, its mission, and its broad array of programs and services. Since we met for a 54th annual business meeting and conference in Baltimore at the beginning of July, 2022, much has transpired with the union. We celebrate the fact that we have scheduled and held seven listening sessions to take a deep dive into the questions you raised. The questions that you raised about the proposed revisions to the UBE bylaws. We will be voting on those proposed revisions this weekend Saturday, October the 22nd at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today, Thursday, is the cutoff for registration. A separate e-blast is forthcoming with details for this members-only, voting-only meeting. Materials and information on accessing the meeting can be found on our website, at ube.org. We thank God for the 87 UBE members who registered to attend those sessions. And we thank the Reverend Canon Dr. Lynn Collins, National First Vice President, for presiding over the Monday evening discussions. The conversations were robust. Attendees were encouraged to participate we hope and pray everyone who attended these meetings felt heard and also were able to hear the reasons why the Joint Committee on Membership and Bylaws proposed revisions which we have been considering. I repeat what we have shared many times over the course of the last eight weeks. This does not mean that every suggestion made will be reflected in the final revisions we will vote upon on Saturday. We received many wonderful suggestions that were not related to the revisions under consideration. It's important that we understand the bylaws are a living document. Every year we are open to receiving new recommendations for change. And every year we plan to be intentional about reviewing our bylaws to make sure that they reflect our reality. If your suggestion did not make it in this go around, make sure you email Mother Collins at RevLynnCollins at the UBE.org to be considered at our next annual meeting in summer of 2023. Please email Mother Collins no later than January 1. We have begun reassembling our committee and task force membership during an election year. Terms typically expire and new appointments are made. This year has been slower than usual pending the action that we take on the bylaw revisions, some of which have to do with how we structure ourselves. We look forward to announcing and posting these committee and task force appointments very soon. Meanwhile, I pause to celebrate Ms. Lois Jackson, our former conference register and administrative consultant. Lois has been a faithful laborer in the UBE vineyard for many years. And although she's not going anywhere, as she steps down and away from these roles, she will be deepening her spiritual life through EFM. We hope to still see Lois around, helping out with the local chapter, and maybe even serving as our annual conference greeter in years to come. We do ask that all chapters please continue sending your membership records and payments to the National Headquarters at 3737 Seminary Road, PMB number 121 in Alexandria, Virginia, 22304 or electronically 
to our National Secretary, Linda Tardy Wilson. Please do not send to the old office location at Holy Comforter in Washington, D.C., nor to Lois at her home address in Ohio. We now have staffing at our national headquarters. Mrs. Joy Walburton is UBE's part-time administrator and two BTS seminarians serve as interns. Mr. Addison McMillan and Ms. Yah Addison, you got to meet them all at the conference in Baltimore if you were able to attend. All three are wonderful seminarians dedicated to UBE and to serving each one of you. Don't hesitate to call the office and leave a message if necessary. Joy, Addison, and Yah are ready to assist you. We are very excited about the progress we have made towards launching our new membership database software, a project we could not have successfully undertaken without the assistance of Midwest Region Director, Wendy Wilson Walker. Our aim is to have that membership database software up and running before the end of the year. That will mean accurate records, abilities to send out invoices, ability to remind you when your next lifetime member payment is due, and other things, communications that have not been as automated as we would have liked them to be in years past. Other committee appointments include the Reverend Deacon Jamasetta Glosson as our new coordinator for the Tuesday night Bible study and Gabrielle Atkinson as our new scheduler for Talk to Talk and We're Talking Now. We are excited by the interest they both have shown in supporting the union on a national level with their time and with their talent. Perhaps the most exciting and long awaited undertaking that we have been able to participate in was to watch a dream deferred for two years come to fruition. We partnered with our local chapter in the Diocese of Chicago, the Bishop Quentin E. Primo Jr. chapter, to host a reception for then Bishop-elect Paula Clark. The next day, we were present in force to bear witness to her ordination and consecration as the 13th Bishop of the Diocese of Chicago. What a magnificent time we had. For those who were not able to attend in person and those who were there but caught up in the glorious spirit of joy that permeated all aspects of what took place, I leave us with a few pictures of the magnificent celebration we had. Be blessed and see you on Saturday, October the 22nd at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time via Zoom.